Hello, this is David Toby. I want to welcome you to today's session. Uh, we will likely have some others join us at some point uh, during this process. We had about 17 people registered uh, for today's session. So we may have to backtrack a little bit, depending on whether um, they come in a little late. Uh, and uh, we also today are going to be welcoming a number of new members uh, to the community. And um, therefore, we'd like to use this opportunity to kind of take a little step back and talk about where we've been, uh, what we've accomplished, and where we're going forward. Uh, this is a, an important intersection uh, in our uh, journey um, because we are in the process of transitioning from the organizing, structuring, and mapping uh, of the course design to the actual instructional design component where we'll be building the uh, instructional modules, the uh, lab specifications, et cetera. So this is a, a, a good time for us to be transitioning in some, some new people uh, to help with that process, and, um, and we want to welcome them. Uh, and as I said, today we'll, uh, we'll go over uh, briefly some of the new um, uh, structures we're putting in place uh, on the community to, to help you on the Google Plus community. Uh, we had uh, sent out, uh, Alan uh, Watkins had sent out a survey um, to ask your feedback on uh, the community site uh, to make sure it's uh, both helpful and engaging. And we got some great recommendations uh, from you all. So we really want to thank you for participating in that feedback survey. And we are in the process of making some changes uh, based on your recommendations. And so we'll talk a little bit about that today. Uh, and then again, of course, as we always do, we'll talk about the task uh, that we have ahead of us for, for this week, um, as well as some of the upcoming um, tasks. So uh, before I jump into that, though, let me uh, start by uh, just asking uh, Alan or, or Vinny, your talk chair, if they have any comments they would like to make. Uh, and so, Alan, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. I think most people on the group might be East Coast and I'm on the West Coast. Um, I, I don't know if we've got, looks like we might have a couple new people in the group. So welcome to you. And just echoing David's uh, thanks for the work so far for those people that have been participating up to this point. Uh, I think you'll appreciate um, some of the changes that David's going to go over as far as the structure and how we're going to coordinate things moving forward. I would like to ask, um, there's someone who's dialed in with a 240 area code. If you could let us know your name, that would be great and we can include it so we know who's with us. You can unmute yourself. Oh, they may not be able to if they're on the phone. I'll unmute oh. them for them. There okay. you go. Now they're unmuted. Yep, uh, that would be Dickie George. I've been here before. Okay, Dickie, oh, thanks very thanks, much. Thanks, Dickie. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't run the web for some reason. It's uh, denied by my, my system. I don't know if they put something new in place. I've been able to go on from my PC before, but phone this time. <laughs> okay, Dickie. Yeah, not surprising. You know, this, the, the, the nice thing about the Google framework, of course, especially for a volunteer effort is it's free um, and publicly accessible. <laughs> right. but, but unfortunately, with free and publicly accessible come all those things that, that people want to filter out. So uh, <laughs> we appreciate uh, you joining us today. I'll, I'll go ahead and put you back on mute. Okay. And there's, there's a couple more people. Yep, go ahead. There's a, there's a 914 area code that dialed in. Can you let us know who you are? 941. 941. Sorry about that. Yeah, hi, this is Doug Logan. Doug Logan? Okay, thanks. And then we had a 732 area code. Yep, that's Ryan Freed. Oops, I got it. Ryan Freed. Okay, thank you, Ryan. I was trying to correct that, and are you are you driving that, David? <laughs> well, yeah, it's funny. It's like, yeah, it's like I think if we both try to do it, it uh, <laughs> it doesn't like that. So not surprisingly, yeah. So I, I did try uh, to mute those who were unmuted, but now it's not letting me. Anyway, good old good old technology. Okay, so uh, as we said today, um, what we'd like to do is uh, walk you through kind of where we've been and where we're going. Uh, normally in these calls, for those who are new, much of the time is spent actually working on tasks together. The main purpose of the calls are to 
provide a, uh, a kind of a time slot so that everybody's scheduled to work on the panel activities. Sometimes it helps to have something in your calendar for that. Um, obviously, we, we obviously use these calls also to share any updates. Uh, but those tend to be fairly short on most calls. Today, we'll have a little bit longer version. Uh, and um, the, uh, the other purpose for the call is if anyone's having any uh, technology issues or concerns or anything that's affecting um, their participation in the task activities, uh, tasks and activities, uh, for them to be able to share that and, and for us to be able to support them uh, during this time. So uh, we will today go over, as I said, a number of um, updates. And then after that, we will turn you free to work on the, the task for the week. Uh, and if there are any questions or concerns that arise during that process, uh, again, we'll, we'll stand by throughout the duration uh, of the call time. But as you're progressing, um, again, as with all of our calls, once we go into the working session, uh, if you feel you're fine, you're working along, you're feel free to drop off and, um, and then we'll see you in two weeks or, or thereabouts. Now this, this call um, is the last actually scheduled call um, for the, um, the panel sessions. Uh, we were going to be, and then that's because we're kind of, as I said, beginning, we're ending the phase with this call of the kind of the organizing and structuring uh, part of the, uh, of the process. We'll be turning um, the continual operations over to the talk area working groups to, to develop the instructional materials. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, here in a minute. And, uh, and then developing a set of special interest groups around uh, topics. So again, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but those will, they kind of take on a life of their own um, uh, in terms of scheduling events. We'll continue to support it with the technology infrastructure, um, like for instance, the Zoom uh, online uh, capability. There's also, although we've not experimented with it, I, I will warn you, we have a lot of this technology that's uh, a bit bleeding edge, it seems at times. And so we do run into uh, occasional burps, um, glitches as my students like to call them uh, with the technology. Um, but uh, Zoom does support breakout rooms, uh, which may be something we take advantage of in the future as uh, it lends itself to the working groups breaking into special interest groups associated with specific topics. Um, so look forward uh, to, to trying some of that uh, to support you guys. So, um, so today, uh, again, just wanted to really refresh where we are. Uh, for those, again, those that are new, we have these Google community sites set up uh, to facilitate the process. Because we've had a lot of interaction over the last several weeks, um, many weeks, uh, we've gotten uh, a, a bit of a clog, clogged uh, um, general community. There's been a lot of posts there that made finding information a little bit more difficult than, than we would have hoped. Um, and, and based on your feedback, we have decided to break the communities up uh, so that uh, groups can be very focused. The information that's made available to you can be much more focused, uh, reduce the amount of clutter and redundancy, and um, allow you to then choose the community focus that you want to, uh, to have for the work that you're doing. And so we are um, in the process, actually we have created uh, three different uh, communities now, new communities in Google Plus that are related to the topic area working groups, TOGS as we call them. And uh, so in the main community, which you see here on the left, uh, again, for those that are new, the, the Google Plus communities allow us to uh, create uh, categories for things. So on the left-hand side here, obviously it uh, defaults to all posts, which will give you everything. Um, and that's the, that, um, setting that usually everybody starts with and therefore you know you can get a lot of stuff there if uh, it's been a while since you've been to the community or as we add things. Uh, we had been using this community separated into separate sections for one TOGS 1, 2, and 3 where the activities could be obtained by just clicking on those uh, but that's the part that had gotten to be um, based on the feedback from the from the panelists um, a little bit uh, either redundant and or um, difficult to navigate because of the amount of information being uh, disseminated across the three groups. So this group of three uh, classifications are going to go away. They are getting replaced by separate um, communities specifically targeting each working group. So there is one now for this group uh, set up for the protected and detect working group. Uh, and right now it has only one post in it, which will be, I'll come back to you later, which is our task for this week. Um, that should, again, help to keep uh, those um, communities much more refined and, and focused and therefore helpful and, and hopefully engaging for you. Um, 
So again, this, these first three on the left-hand side will disappear uh, uh, over the course of the next week or two uh, and as we clean things up and we will move into a more structured environment. To get access to those, you will, um, as a member of the group, you should also receive an invite to join. But if you want to just quickly get in there, in the About community uh, for the main panel that uh, hopefully all of you have already been a member of or, or have joined or are joining, um, and, and we'd like you to, to also be there for general announcements, which I'll, again, talk more about in a minute. But on the left-hand side in the About community, there's a listing, of course, of contact information for the leadership team. But the, down below, there are links to um, important resources. So the project files uh, is where we'll increasingly be putting any kind of archived information. So in the past, we have used um, one of the, the community um, classifications or tags for archived activities. But of course, once they're archived because of the way Google Plus works, they still show up on the all posts view. And again, that was creating some clutter. So we are now um, going to be shifting any kind of archival um, mechanism to Google Docs, uh, Google Files, really, not Google Docs, well, Google Docs in uh, the, uh, the Google uh, Drive uh, structure. And so this project files will give you access to anything that's been archived, as well as other um, documents and materials that'll be useful to you. So that's uh, one important noted change. Secondly, as you can see here on my screen, um, on the left-hand side, at least I hope you all can see, it looks like you can. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, there's, there are now links to join the TOGS. Uh, of course, we want you to join the TOG that you're assigned to um, for the purposes of, of our work. But if you have interest in maintaining um, updates on the other working groups, you're free to join those as well. When you click on that link, it should, uh, assuming Google Plus does what it's supposed to, um, it should give you the, uh, the ability to then be a member of that group. You'll be added to the group and then you'll be able to, uh, you'll get an, a, a, another um, icon in your community page, your general community page, that would show um, that particular community uh, being available to you. So um, that's a simple and easy way to, to join the TOG. If you're, uh, for those who have, don't want to wait for the email that you'll receive for your group, um, go ahead and, and click uh, the Protect Detect uh, TOG link, and that will take you into this one that I'm showing here on the right. Okay, so that's first thing about the structural change. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we will also be, over time, creating a further breakdown of the working group into special interest groups. The special interest groups will be uh, based on topics uh, that are related to the, the course, uh, and that will make much more sense as we get into the final um, set of organizing activities, which is the first set of activities that we're asking our new members to do, um, both in order to get a richer and more effective uh, psychometric um, a, a structure uh, that we, we, we know is empirically based, um, evidence-based, uh, but also um, it, it's a great way of transitioning from you know, the prior work into, uh, in, into our new focus on instructional design and, and should provide uh, a good uh, background for, for the new members to, to get acquainted with the prior work without having to have gone through all of it. Um, also supporting that for, again, those that are new, uh, and as a reminder to, to others, um, again, if you uh, close down, you can just you know, use these arrows to up, close or open those sections. Uh, in the filter area, as I showed you before, uh, there is a, uh, a couple, well, first of all, a new item for community help desk. So if you have any uh, technical issues, uh, getting into any of the activities, participating, accessing the community, any other feedback um, that you would like to give us about the communities uh, or any questions you'd like to ask, please feel free to post uh, and select that uh, category as your category for your post. It will ask you that after you've um, created your post, when you go to add it to the community, it'll say, where do you want to put it? And uh, if it's an item that relates to any type of help desk or, or question regarding the community, please uh, post it to the community help desk. Uh, obviously, anything uh, for the general uh, panel, if you'd like to post information uh, that you think would be helpful to everybody, uh, post it to general discussion. Recommended reading is an area that already has quite a number of useful uh, materials there for the panel members. Um, and again, as a refresher for those who have been with us um, all this time and, and for the new folks um, to, to, uh, to have as uh, important materials for you, 
Uh, in this section are a number of documents that we believe would be quite helpful to you uh, as you you know get up to speed on what we've been doing. So uh, there's uh, the list of learning objectives that were identified uh, by this panel um, to align with the, the work that was done by an earlier panel and last year, the curriculum standards panel uh, of 2016 took the entire uh, curriculum and de degree structure, et cetera, that National Cyber Watch had, had created and mapped them to a series of uh, frameworks and standards that had been produced previously. So the NICE framework, the NIST framework, um, there's industry frameworks such as ESC2M2 for the electric sector, uh, and there's the international standard that was developed by the National Board of Information Security Examiners for uh, job performance uh, requirements. And so all of those, along with some others, um, are, uh, are mapped in the 2016 uh, panel report, and that report is available for you um, in the recommended reading section. There's also some posts that uh, some of your fellow panelists have provided here on important materials uh, that can provide background uh, that could be helpful to us as we design uh, this curriculum. And we'd like to encourage more of you to do that as you come across um, documents, either doc certainly documents you've authored or documents that you feel um, others have authored that would be of value for the community. Uh, please do post those and uh, as those resources will be, be quite useful as we move forward. So here's a couple, um, Taz and, and Chris uh, proposed some, some documents that might be helpful to us. Uh, there's also reference documents in this recommended reading, such as the list of learning objectives that uh, resulted from the panel work uh, to date. And uh, again, very useful for the new folks. But again, uh, for those of you who have been with us, uh, I think you'll find this list is, is helpful as a refresher. Um, it also is a great uh, example of how what we're doing differs from the traditional curriculum that has been developed in cybersecurity. Uh, most curriculum today uses what's called an outcome-based approach, which is designed to uh, determine who should graduate, who should be certified, and even down to who should get an A, a B, a C, or whatever in a course. Um, that kind of outcomes-based approach uh, tends to separate or select people out uh, based on their performance um, rather than their potential. And uh, we're taking an approach that is uh, competency-based and, and mastery learning. Um, designed uh, in that it is really focused on how do we help everybody raise their capability maturity. Uh, it may take some longer than others, but we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to fully realize their potential and develop uh, a mastery of as much of cybersecurity uh, fundamentals in this course and eventually uh, career pathway, um, knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, through a uh, instructional design that adapts to them. And so uh, the, the curriculum that we're designing is designed for personalized learning, uh, where each and every individual has a unique learning path that is based on their current set of capabilities that is determined through uh, rigorous and empirically validated assessments. And then based on the, those assessments, a recommended learning path is developed for each individual. And then as they progress through that learning path, uh, they achieve certain, uh, pass certain thresholds uh, and achieve certain milestones that enable them to then receive recognitions in the form of badges or certificates or the outcome-based things that um, are, have been more traditionally uh, been used to, to gate, if you will, uh, access to the community. And here, in this case, it, they're really being used to help somebody progress into their capability maturity. So that capability maturity word is, or phrase is one we will use often uh, as we uh, look to the next step of, of developing these instructional design materials. Uh, the, the relevant terms, such as what is capability, what is competency, uh, what is knowledge, <laughs> um, are contained in a document that we, again, feel that you will find is, is very valuable, especially as we enter this next phase. So it's a taxonomy of relevant terms. It provides some examples of those relevant terms for cybersecurity. As you'll find in that document, we are very, very particular about how we uh, use certain words. And, uh, and this document, therefore, is extremely important so that we're all um, clear and literally on the same page, pun intended in this case, um, uh, in, in terms of what we mean when we say a competency, when we say mastery, uh, et cetera. So that document is available to you um, for, for your review, um, you know, obviously at the outset or even uh, any time throughout the process to kind of remind yourself what we mean by these various terms. 
Uh, also, uh, as a result of, of some excellent feedback we got from a panel member, and again, we encourage you to share your thoughts on how we can make this uh, more helpful. And, and again, hopefully a site that you want to come to often and share your experience, expertise, and resources um, with the community. Uh, we have developed a, a listing of all the learning objectives sorted by certification domain uh, for the certification. So if you want to understand how these learning objectives relate to a particular certification, um, you, you have this document available to you to, to see that. Uh, similarly, there is a document that was produced by the AC, ACM IEEE Joint Task Force on Cybersecurity Education um, that was produced. This is a really a living document. As you can see here, it's out for review and comment. Still hasn't been finalized. It was just released in July. Um, but there are a set of guidelines on in just in general how uh, programs in cybersecurity should be developed. And so what we're doing really fits hand in glove with this effort because the, the guidelines are intended to be fairly abstract and, and high level. Um, more, uh, and they are indeed guidelines. They're, they're, they're just kind of general um, suggestions on how cybersecurity should be developed in, in terms of education. And, and what we're doing is dealing with the specifics. Um, we're the devil in the details uh, that is going to be de designing the actual instructional materials that can fulfill uh, those guidelines. So understanding those guidelines would be helpful, um, and the document is here to, to help you do that. Uh, Finally, uh, there's a document that Alan posted here on the mapping report that uh, resulted from the standards effort last year, the, uh, the, the curriculum standards panel of 2016. And so again, if you'd like to have a more detailed understanding of how the mapping occurred to the knowledge, skills, and abilities from NICE uh, to the DHS uh, CAE, uh, DHS uh, NSA CAE uh, knowledge units and other uh, standards, that's all contained here in this report. So again, recommended reading, definitely an area that is of value um, and is available here as a filter. Uh, meeting notes is obviously where we'll put uh, prior meetings uh, information. There will also be links here to, uh, to recordings. We typically record one session a week uh, when we do meet. Uh, and, and again, when the TOGS are off on their own and meeting, we will continue to provide that um, resource. Uh, and that way, if you are unable to attend one of the three sessions, or however many sessions the TOGS decide to have, um, you will uh, be able to go here and, and hear a recording of at least one of those sessions. It, 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 you know, it, they're not intended to be comprehensive in terms of catching everybody's comments, but at least giving you, uh, if there has been an update like we are doing today, uh, a chance to uh, catch up on those updates if, if you were unable to attend the meeting. So those recordings are available here. Slide, links to slides or other materials that came from the meetings are in the meeting notes. Uh, instructional design and materials is something that will grow considerably now that we're moving into that phase. Again, there's some information already available here on the templates that NSA has asked that we use in creating instructional designs, um, a, uh, a, any results that came from our prior work. So this is the, the actual learning objectives for the course um, that were developed. And uh, again, a, a good highlight of the difference between uh, competency-based education and outcome-based education if you, you know, most outcome-based courses are typically developed by a single individual or maybe a small group of individuals, and they typically will have a half a dozen or less learning objectives, maybe a few more. In this case, as you'll, you'd see here, there are actually a page and a half of learning objectives, so much more comprehensive, which is very typical of, of competency-based because it gets down to a more granular level. So there will be other resources uh, posted in instructional designs for you. Project planning and updates is just that. Um, any general information on, on the status. Again, each of these categories that I'm going through um, are, are effectively mirrored in uh, each of the TOGS so that you will have a similar um, structure that you can uh, break down in, in your particular areas uh, to categorize uh, information. Um, also in the general uh, group, uh, uh, and again, this could get mirrored in the TOGS if, if we wanna do this as well, especially if new members are added um, within the working groups. Um, and we want to keep track of them. We have uh, panelist introductions. So if you want to know a little bit about your fellow panelists, a number of folks have already posted a background information. Again, we encourage you to do that as uh, it's the best way for people to get to know you um, and, and um, to you know, understand your contribution to the group. And then uh, we will also have here um, uh, requests or openings, if you will, for pilot site nominees and or uh, self-nominations. So we currently have open a, a request for people to participate 
in the concept inventory pilot for the buffer overflow or secure coding assessment. So that's available if you have an interest in that uh, to go ahead and, and basically just post a reply as you see others have done. Um, just add a comment and indicate that you're interested in that. Or if you know somebody you think we should uh, suggest uh, be interested in this, uh, we'd certainly appreciate that as well. Uh, and we will send them notification about um, that pilot. Uh, the Information Security Fundamentals Readiness Assessment is directly related to our course. It is a assessment of the prerequisite capabilities that someone would need in, uh, in order to effectively learn uh, from the course materials that you all are developing. Uh, and again, we are going to be piloting that uh, this coming fall or early next, um, early in the spring. And therefore, um, we, would, we would, again, like to, to know of anyone who would like to participate in that pilot or if you think there are organizations we should invite to participate, um, that should go there. Uh, and then finally, we need obviously to continually identify uh, folks that are gonna implement the modules that you will be developing. Uh, and so that pilot um, uh, nomination process is available here as well. Okay, um, and um, th the same thing here for uh, in, in, in any additional um, information. So this, each of these is designed to, for us to kind of collect uh, nominee information for uh, pilots uh, of all the materials that we will be developing over the course of time. Uh, finally, there is a list here. The completed activities, by the way, is gonna go away. That's gonna be replaced by um, a, the Google folder system uh, so that we don't have to clutter these communities with, with old posts. Um, but the uh, panel reviewer nominees is also an important area, especially now that we're entering this next phase. You can see there's nothing here right now. Um, so uh, what we're looking for there is uh, your nominees for people to be public reviewers of the reports that um, are resulting from this community effort. So as we start to produce reports of the structure, the instructional designs, the specifications for labs, et cetera, uh, we would like to be able to submit those to a more public review. And so if there are institutions, uh, individuals that you believe would provide important feedback to us from a public review and comment on that material, we would greatly appreciate you nominating them uh, and tagging that uh, post with the panel reviewer nominees. So that's all in the general um, community. And again, hopefully this will become much more streamlined now uh, with the, the stru new structure and be much easier to navigate, much more engaging, and hopefully encourage you to contribute more. We really would love this to be a, you know, a self-administering and self-propagating, uh, if you will, uh, community. And, and so we'd encourage you to, to post um, you know, often uh, with ideas and, and resources that will be valuable to everybody. Then in the individual uh, TOGs, each now has their own, as I said, their own section. And so here's where you'll find um, all the important items for uh, what we're working on currently in the working group. So today, um, we are gonna be in a moment setting you free to work on um, the session activities for this week. Our focus now is sequencing the learning responsibilities by responsibility area. And uh, basically the structure is that we have uh, overall responsibilities areas, which came from the international standards effort uh, on job performance. And then there are a set of responsibilities that relate to those that come from a variety of sources, some of the other frameworks, some of the uh, certifications, and of course, that also that job performance modeling effort. And what we're asking you to do is think about how uh, someone should learn how to perform these responsibilities in terms of the sequence of learning in order to uh, ideally develop mastery in that responsibility area. And as with all of our uh, activities going forward, again, based on some recommendations that, we came, that came from you in terms of that feedback survey, we always have our task instructions here at the top, a link to that particular activity. But then we've added this expected time to complete um, to give you a feel for how long this task should take. Uh, and because of some of the technology we need to use in order to synchronize state, uh, it is important that when you begin to work on an activity that you keep working on it until done, uh, because if it does time out, there are some times where that may take you back to the beginning and we don't want you to have to redo effort. So um, it is important to, to try to set aside the time as we do on these calls for you to work um, on an activity before, uh, uh, so that you can complete the activity before you move on um, to the next one. So that will now be listed here to give you some feedback and then also the deadline. Um, for when we'd like to try to have that activity completed. 
Finally, the link itself is, is posted, so you can just click directly on it. When you do that, you will uh, come to a page. Let me just make this a little bigger so you can see it better. Oh, and of course, I timed out myself. That's a good example, but what happen if you time out? So um, when you click on that link, it will take you to an activity. Now, I was already in this activity, and therefore, it remembered where I was. That obviously depends on whether um, you have got your browser set up to allow for um, cookies and things. So you may come back to the beginning or, you know, you might be able to, to go away and come back. I would encourage you not to rely on that. Um, it is supposed to work that way. But as we all know with technology, sometimes it doesn't quite work the way we'd like. Um, and so, again, to the extent you could plan to complete the activity before um, exiting, that would be best. Or if you do need to run away, um, you know, you have an urgent matter come up and you need to move away from what you were doing. Uh, if you could uh, either choose to exit and clear, that would start you over, or at least make sure you shut down the, that browser tab so it can, you know, record a cookie and, and, and bring you back if it's possible, um, in the, depending on your settings. So uh, what we have here is an example. You will receive a different one to start. It is randomized for psychometric purposes, but um, we are asking you to review the responsibilities that are that were previously mapped by the panels uh, to the responsibility area, respond to intrusions. And so there are these four responsibilities. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, we are very particular about the words we use. And so all responsibilities begin with the word ensure because that's what a responsibility really is. It's ensuring something happens. So uh, the way this works, we literally would just click and drag over to the right-hand side to order in the order that we believe would be best learned. And, and if you want to rearrange them um, once they're ordered there, you can do that. Uh, and then once you have them all ordered the way you want, um, you know, again, maybe checking to make sure they're exactly the way you want them, you would click next, you'll get a different responsibility already to go through, and off you go. The whole process should take no more than about 30 minutes. You'll have plenty of time today to finish that um, on today's call. Um, and uh, at the end, it'll cl click submit and off you go. Um, and it should then take you back to the community or, or um, at least close out the activity. There are 14 responsibility areas. So um, this number will increment, obviously, as you go through each one. And as well, the bar here at the top will indicate your level of progress in completing that activity. Um, that's pretty much it for the instructions. If there are any questions at any time, you can post it via chat. You can unmute yourself um, and just raise it to the group. Um, obviously, you can also post to the community uh, in that help desk area with any other general questions or, or um, concerns. And uh, with that, let me just see if Alan or Vinny have anything else they would like to add. If not, we'll set you free to work on the task. No, I don't. I also don't have, but welcome, welcome everyone, and we're all here to help you. <laughs> Great, terrific. All right. Well, again, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you get to this activity again either place, um, so you can, if you have not already joined uh, the tasks, the Talk to uh, community. Um, if you want to get it from the general one, uh, you can click on session two activities or Talk to session activities. It's this one here on the right hand side. This last one here is a remainder for some of the existing TOG members um, who may not have completed uh, task seven. But for the rest of you, task eight is what we're working on. And um, all that information is here as well as in the now new community for TOG two. So with that, we'll turn it over to you and uh, we'll be standing by in case anybody has questions or concerns.